I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm actually nervous about this dinner. Yeah? <laughs> I've cooked dinner in this house so many times, I don't know, it's just a big moment. Hi, I'm Laura Calder. This is my story, but it isn't just about me. And it really did happen. Actually, it's about one of the most important and difficult meals I've ever had to oversee. We're all gonna get along great. At one of the most amazing places. For a VIP group including counts and culinary heavyweights. It was challenging. And it all began when I was really needing a break. Just as I had finished the taping of the second season of my cooking show, French Food at Home. And I want to say thank you to everybody for a great season two. Cheers. Here's to us and I got a call from my mentor, Anne Willen. Anne has written over 50 cookbooks and runs the famous La Varenne cooking school out of her 17th century chateau in Burgundy, France. Anne needed me to prepare and also attend the book lunch dinner for her latest and greatest cookbook, one that I'd worked on with her. I jumped on board, but with one condition. I get to take someone along with me. There's a culinary institute on an island near where I grew up. It's the perfect place to choose someone for me to mentor. I really want to give the experience to someone from where I'm from, which is a pretty remote place, because it's really rare to have that opportunity to go to France. And when you go to France as a young cook, it changes the way you see food. I was lucky enough to train and work in France for seven years, and one of the best parts was apprenticing in a Michelin-starred kitchen. The tradition of the apprentice, or stagiaire, is probably as old as restaurants. A stagiaire is someone who volunteers to work in a restaurant in order to learn from the chef. Chefs won't say yes to just anyone. To do a stage in a fine kitchen, you need to have the chops. Yeah, I've read all about these students. Thanks so much for... Okay, let's go meet them. Great. Set shot here. Yeah. But these weren't stagiaires yet. They were, however, four of the top students in the nation who had just competed for Canada in the Junior Culinary Olympics. They were la creme de la creme. Thanks for coming and yes. cooking today for me. This dinner's happening and I want to bring someone with me because France so changed the way I think about food. Unfortunately, I could only take one person and I know it's gonna kill me. So, if you wanna get cooking, show me what you can do. The students had been practicing to prepare a French meal of their choice, and they had one hour to do it. One hour to knock my socks off. I needed to check their skills in the kitchen, and also to get to know them a bit. I want to continue to learn as much as possible. To learn? As much as I can. About food. About food. Or everything. That is the most enormous carrot <laughs> I've you, ever seen. Mandy's so cute. You could just tell she would be the most reliable person on the planet. Seth was so professional. Like every chop was just. So I just need to know if you've ever made a mistake. I've never cooked anything bad. You never cooked anything bad. That's the feeling I'm getting. Anne reminded me a lot of me. I know she'd make a perfect protege. And I know that she'd really get a lot out of that experience. Why did you want to become a cook? I with my mom. I guess it's every chef's story. Martin was kind of all over the place. Keep cooking, keep cooking. Just checking to see if you're flustered. Oh, yeah, I'm very flustered. It's getting worse. It's <laughs> getting worse. Okay, three minutes to go. I need a plate in three minutes. If you have it, please. How do you make a decision like that? You have four really talented people. Obviously, they're some of the strongest in the whole school. Who do I need the most? Who's going to really stun everyone at that dinner and be reliable? But it's a big experience, and I want to pass on something to someone else. That looks great, don't you? What I like about this, and he didn't show up, it's very restrained. The it's truth is in. The taste. You're good. Here, I like that. Right. What do you think of this one? Soul is fairly classic. Soul, very local. Nice and soft. Tasty. Yeah. This is nice too. This one. This yeah. is uh, a yeah. little more yeah. showy. Nice color. Sauce is. Yeah. Mm. Sauce is delicious. It was great. Last but not least. Yeah. We have the lamb here. I like his little chive flour. This doesn't have much taste. This is a bit dry too. Hmm. They're all great plates. I'm not just judging the plates, of course, though. No, you, you want know, the person as well. There's also the people. 
In the end, I didn't choose a student who was the best technically, but the one who showed the most heart and the one I felt that I could give the most to. Martin, I'm afraid it was probably the weakest plate. The uh, lamb was a little overcooked and I love the chive flour. I just love that happy little note. Um, that carrot had no taste. You've got to learn how to shop. So I think probably you have the longest way to go. And so you should come with me to France. <laughs> it was a nice decision, but was it going to be the right decision? After all, Martin was primarily a pastry student from a village on a small coastal island, and he was visibly nervous. When I was first asked to do this competition in France, I, was, I felt completely honored, first of all, that they would even ask me. It was exciting. It was a whirlwind trip, straight through Paris and out to Burgundy, home of the world-famous Lavarin Cooking School, where I had trained. It sounds amazing. It sounds like a beautiful piece of history. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Magical things happen there. So we're fairly close? We're really close. Chateau du Fay was a place I knew well. I'd lived and worked here on and off for over seven years. Ta-da! Wow. There's zigzag. Hello! <laughs> Goodness, yeah, we're all icky from a climb on the That's just you great. Look fantastic. Laura, was this kind of slight oddity from Canada? We had Canadian trainees. But certainly not from the Maritimes. Good. Martin, meet Anne Willen. Great to meet Martin, go to the latest star. Okay. <laughs> Laura was just a natural at Chateau du Fay. Loved it. We love Laura. Good. Martin's going to help get this dinner underway. Well, I know good. we don't have. I'm a... so glad you can come. Well, well, this dinner is such a big deal for me because, in a way, it feels like a gift. You know, I'm celebrating someone who gave so much to me over the years, and I really want it to be fantastic. What I'm worried about is that I've evolved since leaving here, and Anne is very particular, and the rules are really important. I take a, a very traditional view of French food, how it should be presented, the right way of doing things. Exactly the way something's cut isn't the biggest deal for me anymore, so I just hope that she won't mind. She finds it difficult to accept things as they are rather than things the way she feels they should be. <laughs> Come and see view. the view. Yeah, it's lovely. No time for the view, Martin. There are two other stagiaires here, and they have a head start on us. As soon as people come here, they're immersed. They've been in the kitchen, they know where things are, and I mean, I used to be able to cook blindfolded in that place, but things move around, you know. They're asked to help with the garden, they go to the market and pick up produce. And Martin doesn't have a clue. I, I don't even know if he can turn on the oven at this point, so. There's that to worry about. Cinq poulets. Cinq poulets. Oui. <laughs> Up next, Martin gets his first taste of France. Taste it. Take a bite. <laughs> that is a carrot. <laughs> My mentor Anne Willen taught me everything I know about classic French cuisine. But I've evolved since then, and now I'm back in Burgundy to oversee an important dinner at her chateau in just two and a half days. Good. How many again did you say? Um, we're going to be ten, okay. and there's some really important people coming. Do you want that, coffee? Martin? <laughs> I'm taking notes. Menu. What's the main course going to be, do you think? Chicken something. Yes. We have lovely poulet fermé in the market. Wild mushrooms. Great. Okay. That yeah, right? even better. Okay. Chicken with wild mushrooms, and you're just leaving that yeah. open? With you that? figure out what you want to do with it. Okay. Have a mirabel, that's from the garden. You mentioned snails. It's not too low, bro. <laughs> no, come on. Well, well we've got to do that in Burgundy. Let's do something with tomatoes. Okay. I mean, we could do a real chateau favorite baked in the oven. We can. Dessert. <laughs> oh, all eyes on Martin. <laughs> You just go figure something out. All right. <laughs> is that all right? Oh, there's plenty of choice in the library. Let's and wine. Library. What about wine? Is it going to be local? Is it going to be... It sounds a terrible thing to say. We should go better than local. I'll call Brenda more. I mean, he knows everything. Yes. 
Okay. See you when, you know. So, yeah, dinner. call me when you <laughs> got need advice. <sighs> Thank God. First stop, the potager, the chateau garden that would provide us with the freshest ingredients. And only after that will we go to the market. Now I wonder what's left in here. It's a little late. Peaches over there. Crab apple. Beautiful. Ooh, uh, really sour. These are quince. Do you know what quince are? Um, I've never seen them before, no. Don't break your teeth. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that a pear tree? That is a pear tree. The question is just if they're ready. Mmm. Yeah. Good flavor. Are you good? They're perfect. <laughs> Very funny. We just need 10 perfect looking pears. You can slow bake them so that the wine penetrates all the way through to the middle. You can put them on a little tart thing. Yeah, I think we have enough. Perfect. Well, we can always come back and get more if we want to, but these are gorgeous. Martin really shocked me with his choice of carrot on the island. Part of my reason for bringing him to France was to teach him how to shop for ingredients the French way, at the market. Eat one. It's so sweet. Okay, okay. Deal. Down to business. You know what we should get first is the chickens, because they can go in the bottom of the basket. Look at those turkey necks. Je voudrais cinq poulets. Cinq poulets. Oui. <laughs> in France, they leave the heads on their market chickens in order to showcase their freshness. Voilà. Merci. Merci. Okay, I'll take a chicken. Let's get the mushrooms, how about? Okay. Qu'est-ce qui va être le mieux avec une sauce à la crème uh, Non, la tirole, il faut la manger nature, le plus nature possible, pour ne pas mettre de crème. He thinks we should serve it separately from the chicken and not put it with the chicken at all. What do you think Il faut un kilo et demi. Un kilo et demi, go for it. Beaucoup de travail. Lots of work, he just said. <laughs> I gotta make my dessert. <laughs> dessert, you think you're only doing dessert oh, no. At last I found real carrots to show Martin. I hoped he would finally understand my issue with his franken-carrot. He just got those this morning out of his garden. Taste it. Taste it. Take a bite. That is a carrot. Oh. Now we need wine, and we are going to call Brendan right now. And who's Brendan? He's a good friend of mine. He's Mr. Wine. He knows everything. He'll get us the best stuff. Plus, he's coming to the dinner, so I know he'll cook good things. Coming up, Martin and I go on a wild ride through a thousand-year-old wine cup. Hold on for dear life. My pet project, Martin and I, came all the way to France to do a dinner for the book launch of Anne Willen's latest and greatest cookbook about classic French country cooking. Ooh, I love this place. It's so creepy. The French have a long and well-known history with wine. Martin doesn't. For him to experience a wine tasting in a thousand-year-old Burgundian cave must have been quite a privilege. And I always enjoy spending time with my friend Brendan Moore, a renowned wine expert. So this is a 14th century cellar. It's a working winery and they keep their wines down here. Lots of mold in the air, very what? moist. And every house in this village has a cellar like this. Wow. And this is the house next door. So once again, this is their cellar with their uh, own wine vat here as next door. Little swimming pools kind of. Exactly. Like. Nice. This is quite interesting. This is, this is the bedrock here. So the, the vines above us are planted on this rock and uh, the roots manage yeah. to find their way down through these crevices here. Yeah, there's a labyrinth of tunnels. These barrels are still used by the family. These are 600 litre barrels called Demi Mui. They're empty at the moment, but once again, next week, all of these barrels will be full. That was awesome. Yeah, have a seat. Thank you. Tell me all about this special dinner. Oh, yeah. The wine has to be perfect. The food has to be perfect. I have no time to organize it. I would love a drink. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> so, and Anne has these particular things she wants, right? So, snails. Now that we have most of our ingredients, the menu is starting to take shape. I explained what I could to Brendan so he could match the wine to the food. So, uh, let's see, we'll, t we'll start off with maybe an Aligose, which is the other white grape variety from here. Uh, I mean, not, it doesn't have to be, you know, massively pricey, but it has to be perfect. So, Marcin, have you tasted lots of wine, or is this a relatively new um, experience for you? Relatively new. I've had a few uh, the Chateau. Brendan's done thousands of tastings, and you can learn a lot just from watching his masterful moves. 
He even spits like a pro. And it's a wine that you normally drink young. And as I was saying, 2006 was a great year. You really have to stuff your nose into the glass here because these wines are delicate. And they're quite timid, so they need a bit of coaxing out. So you need to sort of really agitate the glass. And then the bouquet, the delicate bouquet will start to come out. Nice big mouthful. I'll yeah. spit, you can swallow it. I don't know. It's good, but it makes me want something bigger than, uh, makes me want fish. Well, we'll try a 2005. Coat Dogs there, 2005. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit guilty that you're the only one spitting. I'm driving closer. <laughs> you're driving. We'll try a Shabby now. This is my favorite wine. That is just so classic Burgundy, isn't it? This is called Beauvoir. Have you spat anything out yet? No. <laughs> All right, then I'm not counting. And maybe this will be the I do like yeah. it, Savoy. <laughs> I would take this little one mm -hmm. or this more impressive one. I think both of those would be great. Oh, and red wine. What about red wine? What's in your cellar there? Well, I have, I have probably a few, um, a few um, suitable bottles in my cellar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Thanks. we should go out to the, have a look at the vineyards. Yippee! <laughs> well, I'm glad you're not driving. Well, I had five mouthfuls. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of grapes on the vine, and it wasn't crucial for the meal, but this was an experience I wanted Martin to have. A visit to some of the most famous vineyards in the world. Well, here we have classic limestone soil here. You can see how rocky it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what really um, you're tasting when you come to taste the white wine from this vineyard, and this is Chardonnay. This is a Chardonnay grape here. Um, this year, the problem's been not enough sunshine, so now the sun's out. Hopefully, they'll ripen, but this is the big problem. Actually, very sweet there. You can see it everywhere. Yeah. And this one here, this vine, unfortunately, has died, so oh, well. not a great year for looking at the grapes, but, um, <laughs> but it's going to make, I mean, the one I've got, it's sweet. This, yeah, this, one, this will make yeah. um, in three or four days' time. It should ripen up even more, and that's going to be a a great white wine from this vineyard. And this village down here, this is um, Shitri. Yeah, it's beautiful. Feast your eyes on this. <laughs> yeah, it was gorgeous. Thank oh, you so much, yes, Brendan, really, you. and for picking those wines. <laughs> We've got Pleasure. a boogie. Pleasure. Well, we'll see you Thursday night. OK, I'll be there. Ignition. Hold on for dear life. <laughs> Like Next, see the bizarre world of escargot farming and what happens when I take Martin to his first Michelin starred kitchen. Anne's forte is classic French cuisine, which is deliciously simple but deceivingly difficult to get just right. Working with fewer ingredients and cooking with basic, timeless methods means that every action must be that much more precise, especially with this discerning crowd. Anne really wanted us to serve escalgo at the dinner, but I still wasn't sure what to do with them. Mark, this is an electric okay. fence. If you're not inspired, or even if you are, find a way to get to know your ingredients. In France, you can actually get to the source of escalgo. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like this in your life? No. It's like little rooftops. And it's so fun to buy what you need straight from the farmer. There's 350,000 just in this one little group. So the escargot, what he does, he passes his life under the planche. So he lives like right on the planche. bottom part of the wood. And the night, he mounts on the planche to eat the nourriture. Ah, and at night, he comes out onto the top to eat this food. And what is the nourriture? It's the farine with the maize, the blé, the orge, the guane, etc. With lots of grains in it. That way he gets his shell faster if he eats those little, that sand, it makes the shell. Gotcha. Why did anyone ever think these would be good to eat? Et en fait, on ne garde que le pied, c'est-à-dire que la viande. So you just keep the meat, which is the foot. Ah, oh. did you know that? No. As did I. Parce que le pied, c'est un muscle, c'est de la viande. It's a muscle, so it's meat. Can you imagine this place at night covered with snakes? Now we had fresh produce, fine wines, and some world-famous escargot in hand. But what we still didn't have were our recipes. 
Luckily, Anne has one of the most important private cookbook collections in the world. She has thousands of titles spanning 500 years. They fill rooms and are stacked too deep on the shelves. Have a seat, Martin. It's the perfect place to get Martin inspired and to create our menu. I'm going to let you work out your dessert on your own. You can talk to me about it, but chicken. Chicken right there. Poached with salsa and cream. This might work. OK, this is a possibility. Is that Anne's new book? That's the new yeah. book. Let's take a look at that and see what we can find. Good idea. Look up chicken. Chicken? OK. So. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Uh, velouté sauce. Cognac. And truffles, what do you cook it in? You dig it on a cocotte, and you just cook it until it's, and so it's completely immersed in wine. That sounds good, then you know it's going to be tender, and this one uses wild mushrooms. Will well, you do the tests? Yeah. What else I'll do, do one test, need? you can do the other test. I'm putting in a... So what else do we need? We need those snails. Way back here. Snails and garlic butter, that's very classic. Martin and I had worked out our menu, but still couldn't settle on the escargot. And you just want like an amuse bouche type? Yeah, I just want thing. one little bite. So you know what, you take that. I'm going to call Chef Gautier. So I called one of our most esteemed dinner guests, Chef Patrick Gautier, who holds two Michelin stars at his famed restaurant La Madeleine near the chateau. Merci, à bientôt. There was no answer. I left him a message, but... And since uh... time was of the essence, we headed on over. The Mission Star system was originally devised to sell tires by getting people to travel around France trying out all the great restaurants. But it has evolved into a global standard, which is unparalleled. To be rated with even one star is to have achieved a degree of culinary perfection. Chef Gautier has two stars, which makes him among the most important chefs in France. Oh, Laura, ça va? Oui, C'est un stagiaire que j'ai apporté avec moi. Enchanté. Il fait la cuisine Oui. Alors. J'ai acheté des escargots pour dîner ce soir. Chef Gautier a vraiment venu me avec une idée pour les escargots, utilisant son propre chou pastry, que il a promis de prendre. Avec du gruyère. Super, merci. Mais puis il est allé un pas plus loin. Un grand pas. Le chef m'a surpris en disant que si Martin ou un des autres étudiants était à son standard, il aurait offert une position de stagiaire à la Madeleine. Quelle opportunité. Je pense que c'était le genre de stepping stone que tous les étudiants devaient prendre. Je pense que c'était le genre de stepping stone que tous les étudiants devaient prendre. Je pense que c'était le genre de stepping stone que tous les étudiants devaient prendre. Je pense que c'était le genre de stepping stone que tous les étudiants devaient prendre. Je pense que c'était le genre de stepping stone que tous les étudiants devaient prendre. Staging at a two-star Michelin restaurant would be an amazing start to my career, I'm not going to lie. And I think it would be um, a once-in-a-lifetime chance. But Martin won't be working here unless he can outperform the other two students at Lavaren and prove himself to Chef Gautier. You pooped already. <laughs> Me too. You nervous? Yep. <laughs> That's good. Because if you weren't nervous, I'd be even more nervous. Yeah, it's going to be a hectic day tomorrow. Enjoy your last evening of peace. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, we prep, test, Biscuit. and get scrutinized. They're hard on food white plates. They don't say, oh, come and eat me for talks. It was a crucial prep day, and Martin was now competing with the other two students on our team for a coveted stagiaire position. But I needed us all to stay focused on what was most important. Martin? Stone. Jamie. The perfect execution of classic French country cuisine. I don't really know, Stella and Jamie. Let's hope we can work together and not against each other. I mean, I know we're competing for stage positions. Let's just hope that we can work together and make this a good meal for Anne and for Laura. Do you mind pushing down a bit, then? Martin's a little nervous, and I don't understand why it has to be that way in kitchens. It's this whole professional tough guy thing, which I can't stand. I hope they warm up a bit. He'll be okay, though. I hope. Morning. Morning. There you are. I'm looking all over for you. Hi, I'm Laura. Hi, Stella. Hi, Stella. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, Jamie. 
Thanks for helping out. You know what this is about. <laughs> it's a big dinner tomorrow night. It's, uh, it's only 10 people maybe, but it's very important and I can't cook because I have to be there. And I feel a great weight. So I copied some recipes out of one of her books and I've made changes I've written in here for testing. But we're gonna ax the truffles and figure it out with trompette. This is chicken with morels, but we're not gonna use a vin jaune just use plain wine, and we'll see which one's best. In fact, why don't you go get the chickens? I bought five, okay. two stunt chickens. All right. Uh, they're in stockage. Okay, you no want to just run and get those. And um, I've got to run to the market because there's some stuff I couldn't get. What do you need? I need I just green beans and carrots and stuff. We have them in the garden. garden. I'll go get them. You've got to get on your dessert. Yeah. Have you figured out what you're doing? Yeah, I've, I've been working on it. I have some, some ideas going on in my little book here. So um, I'm going to do a poached pear with some vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Um, tweel or puff pastry or milk, which is where I'm trying to find something to put the ice cream on top of. And maybe a sauce with some of the liquid, the, the poaching liquid. Are you going to test that or are you just going to make it? I think we should give it a little try first. Well, because I need you to test something else. These tomatoes, I need you to dress it up a bit. So I put in some notes here to change this and just try one. If you can think of a way to just... Dress them up. And I've got to go to the other side, but I'll be back in a minute and I can help. Potager means vegetable garden in French. And at one point, this one would have been even more plentiful and would have fed the 40 or 50 people living at the chateau, both the owners and their numerous staff. Today, it still provides the fresh ingredients that they need in the kitchens of La Varenne. There's a ton of stuff in the garden. You just need to know where to look. Hi. 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 Hey. Looks nice. <laughs> I just thought of something about these chickens. What about we plate the main course plate dessert and then this we do the usual way she does okay. it. Because I don't want it to look like a casual saute. I want it right. to look... Nice. Thanks. Yeah. Alrighty. Alright, sounds good. Okay. I need an onion, you need an onion. Stella's got a big personality, onions. doesn't she? So, alright, start unpacking. We're doing our fit. Just a little nervous about that. She's really, uh, feisty. I'll move these out a little man's way. I'm sure she's nice, though. I'm sure she can cook. Um, you're gonna cut off the bottoms if they're really buggy or dirty. Recently graduated with a uh, degree in culinary arts. And I'm here now in France to learn all about French cooking, French culture, and to expand my horizons. I'll just get the feathers off these chickens. All right. OK. Martin? I've been in the culinary field for about seven years now. And I decided that I would apply for a scholarship through the James Beard Association to Le Cordon Bleu in Paris. And surprise, surprise, I actually got it. And so I found myself in Paris for about a year and a half. <laughs> But I've always wanted to work here with Anne, and so I'm really happy to find myself finally here at the Chateau. Is Laura in there? Yep. Laura? So I'm not quite sure what, what, what we're doing with those mushrooms. I mean, Jamie seems very solid. She doesn't say much, so who knows? She could be full of surprises. But I like that she's always asking questions before she does stuff. Let's just see when we get the sauce, because I have no idea what that tastes like. I'm sure we, we can talk about it later, too. So. I know she's not going to run off and make a big decision without asking me, so I feel at least relaxed on that point. Our first impressions with Martin, I think, were he's a little bit young and he's definitely nervous. He just seems overwhelmed by the whole experience here. The tomato dish that I'm doing, let's just hope I can I can do it the way Anne wants it because it is her house specialty. So let's just hope I can pull it off. But I think, you know, his, he's got great passion. He's serious, he's focused. He's obviously here for the right reasons and I mean, I think he's gonna go a long way. Hi, Laura. Oh, hi. How are you getting on? Good. Looks a bit quiet to me. Well, I'm just should I tomato. look at the chicken? I mean, I'm still in awe of being here at the Chateau and working with Anne. She's one of the top culinary women in the world right now, and I think we're really lucky to be able to be here. That's a little bit discolored. Was that because it was sitting on the bottom of the pot? Two different sauces? Two different sauces. Might be a little bit thick. All right. Okay. Okay, let's look at the other one. That's think? more what I'd call contemporary consistency. Okay, so you'd like it thicker? Well, I'm not sure. What <laughs> you, think? It's, uh... you see, it's not holding the, the line mm -hmm. as clearly. She's a, 
a particular woman with a strong personality that has a lot to share. That one to me tastes like canned mushroom soup. <laughs> That's what she said earlier. She oh. said it looked like that. It now that you mention it, mm. well, yeah. yes. and I've and I haven't put all the Whereas mushrooms. Whereas this has, has some, a much more action to it. You can be at odds at each other in the kitchen and cooking, and you feel like you've just messed up dinner, but she just lets it go and she doesn't hold any of that against you. And the next day you just start again and there you are, square one, learning something new. Now, you've got a nice tomato to show me? Yes, I do. Oh, I like that top. You choose a plate. Well, pick two, because we'll have a contrast and see which is best. If you had two tomatoes, we'd line them up side by side. Do you like that? Okay, Be honest. Straight into it. I'll have to see it on this one first. Okay, put it on that one. This is his modern obsession with white plates. You've got a totally different atmosphere here. You do. And, and they're hard on food, white plates. They don't come and say, oh, come and eat me. Actually, to me, we're in the countryside. That's warm and welcoming, that's fun. Food talks. Let's have a taste. The seasoning will depend on how much salt there is in the cheese. Hmm. Thumbs up. Very yeah. well, Mark. Thumbs right. up. Okay. <laughs> now, Laura, this reminds me. So far, of course, I'm getting nervous. We need to do much more advanced prep. Have you chosen plates here? No. Platters? No. This dinner shouldn't be so hard. Tablecloth. Are you going to do plate service? Have you got the wines chilling? It's 10 people. It's, it's dinner. And just what glasses you want on the table, right. how many wines are you going to have? I have two relationships with Anne. One, she's like a mother. She's, uh, you know, warm and lovely and great with me. But then as soon as we switch into work mode, she becomes so stern. I'm concerned. I think you need to all get your act okay. together a bit. When everyone gets tense, then everything starts falling apart, and especially when Anne gets tense. Yeah, if I could just have a word, Laura. Yeah. Okay? Come into my study. My biggest concern about the meal, I want Laura to really enjoy it. But Laura's in charge, and when you're in charge, you've got a lot of responsibility. You know, you really can't come into the kitchen dressed like that. You're setting an example to these young people. Professionalism in the kitchen. Those shoes are actively dangerous. If you spill anything, drop a knife, turn your ankle in those. I'm not really cooking, though. I'm just kind of... Well, you should be cooking, because you'd be going in and testing things. Yeah. And... You think you're not a trainee anymore and that you've evolved out of it and finally, you, um, finally you're in your good books. Your apron is a bit... Poor old thing. <laughs> OK, I'll see what I can find. I can see your underwear. And then as soon as you're back in work mode again, you might as well be 18 years old again. We've got to decide who's sitting where, what kind of lighting are we having. She wants something. She gets it. What are we going to do about aperitifs? Got to have a glass of champagne. I'm used to nice home environments. This is not actually what I had in mind. This is a big day for me and for Martin. Tonight's dinner is what we traveled across an ocean to prepare. I've got Anne's reputation for great classic cuisine on my shoulders, and Martin has his sights set on beating out the other two students for a coveted stagiaire position that could change his life. It's mornings like this that make me wonder how things might be different in 12 short hours, for better or for worse. I'm a little worried about, about tonight's dinner. My nerves play a big factor in it. I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to <laughs> nervousness. That would be my biggest worry, is if I was to fail and not impress anybody. What do you got going on today, Martin? I saw you were up late last night poaching pears. Yeah, I got them all done. They're just hanging out in the fridge. Morning. Morning. Nice jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Many ways to express devotion. 
We don't have much time, so we really have to get everything going. I'm glad that uh, test worked okay. Mm -hmm. Martin, you have to do your tarts. Yep, they're all right done, away. ready and uh, waiting for the filling. Good, Getting then happy. I can steal you to do the yeah, table. definitely. If you guys get on the chicken and the side dishes, your tomatoes and the dessert, I want action when Gautier gets here. Okay, all right. Action. Classic French cuisine uses timeless cooking techniques and quality produce with careful attention to getting every aspect of it right, which is no small feat. So we can just set those here. Glasses are all here. A napkin there. That's it. Got it? Mm -hmm. Hi. I brought you some decoration. Oh. I thought it would look good in the middle. That's not incorrect, but I always put these here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Red wines, this one. I think it looks terribly military to have a long line of glass. <laughs> I personally like a triangle. Yeah, OK. Good. Some of those need a good wipe with a damp cloth, nice polish. OK, okay. I'm going to go do some I'll place you. cards. Right. And uh, you're on your own, Martin. All right. for Chef Gautier because I knew he would never select a stagiaire without observing them in the kitchen first. As I expected, he arrived early to get in on the action. Uh. Chef! <laughs> Ça va bien? Oui, vous? Ouais, je suis très Merci content d'être Um, I've come to see how you're doing. Now we're serving dinner on the dock. You have an hour and ten minutes. The potatoes need to go in, they're going to take... The recipe says potentially 45 minutes. Yes, well, watch it, because they've oh. been done often, those recipes. The mushrooms? The mushrooms are washed and ready to be sautéed in butter. Those look fine. Have you thought about bread? No. Well, you need to think about bread okay. right this minute. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, oh. 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 Chef Gautier is up there. When Chef Gauthier came into the kitchen, it was pretty intimidating. He comes, you know, come walking in with the big chef's hat. Enchanté. Stella. Stella. Enchanté. Enchanté. Okay. Enchanté. Okay. It's pretty interesting to see every chef has their own way of doing things. Like when it came to chopping the garlic, he had his own more efficient way of doing it. I'm pretty nervous because I don't think I'm up to the level that he expects me to be. The dernier moment, au four. Oui. I've got champagne chilling, I've got sauterne chilling, I've got white wines chilling. Um, someone has to make espresso during dessert to bring out after dessert. I'm leaving you. I've got to go get changed. I can't look like this, obviously. Doing a stage with Gautier would be amazing. He's a wonderful teaching chef, and the restaurant's fantastic, and it would mean the world to me. Un petit peu de fond. That's why I'm here in France. I'm here to immerse myself in the best culinary experience I can. 23 minutes to service. Quickly. I need, I need duck fat. I think someone yeah, went to go get it from Stuff Hat. to see them really enjoying our escargot appetizer. Yeah. Yeah. C'est bon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah. We're here to celebrate my new book, The Country Cooking of France. Laura has um, made a huge contribution to this book. But we're going to have a wonderful dinner. So, Welcome to some country cooking of France. Bon appétit.
Tomato Dish is a Chateau classic, and it looked fantastic, really bright, and they were all complaining about using those green plates, but actually they were perfect for it, and it was delicious too. I'm worried about that. You just keep that stuff Anne wanted to check in on the presentation of the main dish. It was a black and white course, and so the display had to accent the classic simplicity of Burgundian cuisine. And you take it out and whatever it takes to make it look good. At Anne's request, I returned to the table, but Chef Gauthier just couldn't resist heading back to lend his expertise. Presenting the poulet fermier before serving was lovely and added cachet to the classic Burgundian dish, but it may have been too much of a distraction for the kitchen. Next, Chef Gauthier finds flaws in the kitchen and frets over who he will choose as his next stagiaire. Gauthier was running and I thought he was just going in to observe a little bit. You know, he wanted to see them really in action so that he could uh, really see who could stand up under pressure and who would be the best stagiaire for him. We were in the middle of plating and we had all of our sauces on the plates and they were cold because we forgot to warm them up. So we made a scrape them all off and put them back into the oven after they were cleaned to, to reheat them. Heating the plates is a normal thing to do during service, but so much chaos was going on, we just forgot to do it. Cold plates would have translated quickly to cold food, which would have been an embarrassing mistake with this distinguished crowd. Luckily, Chef Gauthier has a keen eye for detail. I don't think Gauthier did too much in the kitchen, but when I saw the plates, I thought he probably had a finger in some of them. They did a great job on the main course. You'd think it would be boring, but in fact, with the white sauce on it and then those jet black mushrooms all around it, the trompette de mort, it looked extremely elegant, really a sophisticated dish, and it tasted fabulous. Thank you. All that remained was Martin's dessert. I knew he felt the pressure. This could make or break his chance at the stagiaire position with Chef Gauthier, not to mention how important it was in topping off the meal and leaving a good impression with the guests. Of course, his pastry skills shone through, and I heard rave reviews of the dessert. But I had just one tiny complaint. I was a little disappointed because I wanted to see a real swirl of those cooked down juices. They were so delicious. He let me taste them beforehand, and then when the plate came out, they seemed to be gone. Gauthier liked all the stagiaires and he thought they all were really good cooks and, and competent people. He said his choice was really hard and I believe him. I would have had the same problem. The chef just would like a word. When Laura and Chef Gauthier pulled all of us from the kitchen, I didn't really know what to expect. So my stomach was in knots and the butterflies were there as usual. And it was just one of those intense moments where it, you just went with the flow. Voilà. Vous avez tous uh, du courage. You're all very courageous. Vous avez tous uh, bien participé. Vous avez mis tout votre cœur. Everyone participated and put in their whole heart. La, la difficulté était peut-être un petit peu différente. Some people had more difficulty maybe than others. Mais c'est moi qui ai la difficulté pour, uh, pour vous départager. He has a hard time deciding. 
J'ai choisi Jimmy. Oh, merci chef. <rire> merci beaucoup. Merci, merci chef. Félicitations. Oh, merci beaucoup. Félicitations merci. aussi. Merci. C'était très difficile pour moi. Hein. Oui. Hein? Félicitations. Merci. Je vous attends dans la cuisine, bien oui. propre. Hein? D'accord. Oui, merci. Chef. I hoped Martin wasn't too dismayed about losing out to Jamie. She did have more experience than he did. And hey, maybe this cloud has a silver lining. Come with me, have a little chat with Monty Laura. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, it's over. My God, it's the first time I've heard you use a loud voice in days. Well, it was the first meal I ever had to cook, serve, clear, <laughs> pour <laughs> wine, um, and yeah, it was unreal. But it was Do you know, cool. people don't realize how much goes into so here's a question. I'm just curious why why you picked me to come to France with you guys. You just well, you know, when you're not under pressure, you're such a warm, curious guy, and you. I just think you have a sense of beauty or wonder about you or something, and it just inspires me. I just think you can. Maybe I wanted to bring you because I wanted you to stretch your head and. Well, it has. You, you've, it has. you do such beautiful presentations, and you do, you know, when you do things carefully, you just, you're so good at them. I mean, I'm sort of disappointed that Chef Gauthier didn't pick you, but what if, like, next summer you came and worked in the kitchen on the show? Um, you see, it's all fast-paced. Yeah. There's a little bit of time to move around. You get to see all of these amazing things happening. You get time to work with a recipe. You get to see all these things. How about that? That would be amazing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a yes? Yeah, I'll have to talk to some people, but... Oh! <laughs> to talk to the people! <laughs> but no, that was, yeah. Talk to me! Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> your styling is so good. I love the way you make things look so beautiful all the time. And I really think you're going places, Martin. And I want to help you get there. You're my little project! <laughs> you're awesome.